this morning. Welcome to your great virtual experience of encountering Jesus Christ this morning. I'm going to take our reading from the book of Corinthians, Corinthians 13, and I read, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I've not love, I have become sounding brass or sounding cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I've not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to, to be burned, but I've not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind, does not envy, does not parade itself, it is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, it is not provoked. Thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails, but whether they have prophecy, they will fall. Whether they are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But we know now in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know. I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of this is love. Hallelujah. Confession brings. Confession brings. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. I am built on the rock. Seated together with Christ in heavenly places. I am overtaking all the way. I want you to demonstrate this morning. Say, I am overtaking all the way. I am designed to triumph in Christ Jesus. I am a blessing to mankind. I am a sign and a wonder to this generation. I am a dread to the devils. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The favor of God is upon me. Now put your hands on your head and say, the favor of God is upon me. The favor of God is causing rules and regulations to be changed for my sake. I receive open doors and help everywhere I go. People shall go out of their ways to favor me. All my needs are met and running over. I am the righteousness of God. I want you to say that with confidence and say, I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. I and my family are the righteousness of God. I and my children are the righteousness of God. We are partake of his divine nature. I am complete in Christ Jesus. I want you to say that with confidence. Say, I am complete in Christ Jesus. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. I'm an ambassador of light. I am radiating his glory. I am maturing the love of God and fulfilling all his plans for me. Say that again. Fulfilling all his plans for me. There is a power at work in me that makes the rulers of darkness tremble. That power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Say that again. That power is the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the anointing, yoke destroying, sickness destroying, burden removing, power of God, stagnation removing, COVID removing, sickness is removing, poverty removing, shame removing, the power of God. Put your hands together and say the power of God is at work in me right now. Yes, the power of God is a walk in me right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to look up to heaven this morning and say, Father, we are thankful. Lord, I thank you. 
Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful for all that you've done for me. For all that you've done for me. You are perfect in all your ways. You are perfect in all your ways. You are not a man, oh God. You are not a man, oh God. Hallelujah.
the one who holds the heavens and the earth. Lord, we we'll magnify your name. We exalt you, O God. We give you glory. We look around, we are looking for the poles that you have used to uphold the earth. We cannot find the poles, yet your hand holds it together. Lord, we worship you. You are a God in a class of your own. None can be compared with you. Father, we give you praise, O oh Lord. We worship you. Nobody can sit in heaven and make their heart footstool. You are the only one that can do this. You are the greatest. Lord, we worship you. Most high. 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 We exalt your name. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The ancient of this. You dwell in Shekinah glory. Lord, we worship you. We exalt your name. In all your majesty, you still choose to call us your own. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. We give you praise, O oh God. We worship you. That our beds did not become our coffins this morning. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. Thank you for protecting our going out and our coming in. Father, we give you praise for building a defense around us. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. No matter what we might be going through today, we know that you are good. Because the Bible says all things work together for good. For those who love you and those who are called according to your purpose. Lord, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We worship you. We cannot thank you enough. We give you glory. Please accept our hearts of worship this morning. Accept our grateful hearts this morning. See all these grateful hearts, oh God. Say thank you, Jesus. Let the meditation of our heart of this gratefulness, let it be acceptable unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want us to pray a prayer in Psalm 46, Psalm 46, verse 5. Psalm 46, verse 5. And I'm reading the New Living Translation, Psalm 46, verse 5. It says, God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. God dwell in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. I want you to pray this morning. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. The Bible says, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we are the, the one that God dwells. So you're going to pray this morning. Father, I know you dwell in me. So I will not be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. From the very break of the day, you will protect me. You will protect my children. You protect my family. You protect all that concerns me. You protect everything that has to do with me. You protect my destiny. You protect my children's destiny. Because you dwell in me. 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 Just for this morning, Lord, we receive your protection. We receive your protection. You are in the midst of us. You dwell in us, oh God. You dwell in us. You will receive your protection over ourselves, over our families, over our children, over our city, over our places of work, over our doctors. Over our nurses, over the frontline workers, we receive your protection, oh God. You dwell in us. You dwell in us. You dwell in us from the break of the day. Father, you protect us in the name of Jesus. You protect us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Blessed be your name. 
Father and our God will bless your name. Lord, we worship you. Jehovah will praise your name. We give you glory, O oh God. Because you dwell in us, we are assured today that from the break of today, you protect us. You protect our families. You protect our children. You protect our loved ones. In the name of Jesus, you protect our city. You protect our land. You protect our nation. In the name of Jesus, you protect our destinies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. This morning, speak to us, O oh God, like never before. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We'll bless you. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One or two announcements before I go into the world. First, I want to thank the men of House of Grace. Thank you so much for your love. I really appreciate the kind gesture for Mother's Day. Thank you. God that has made you the head, you will never be the tail. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you that you shall be first and not the last. In the name of Jesus, that everything your heart desires, the Lord will grant unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you so much um, for Mother's Day celebration. Even though we had some hiccups, but we thank God. I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Hallelujah. The other announcement I have, and I will do that again at the end of the service again, um, is I know the state of Virginia has um, opened the church for about 50%, but to the end of the month as a church, we're still having online services until we're able to work out the logistics of our opening. Hallelujah. So, till the end of the month, we're still having online services until we're able to complete the logistics of our reopening back together. And once the logistics is in place, the information will be passed across to everybody. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. We're going to continue our series on victory in his hammer. Hallelujah. Amen. And as we continue this series today, the Lord will guide you victory in every area of your life that you're looking unto him for victory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm going to read from verse 10 to 18, very quick. Um, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, and I'm reading the Amplified Version. Draw your strength from him, that strength which, that strength which his boundless might provide. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. For we're not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotism, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands, to stand firmly in your place. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy, with a firm-footed stability, the promptness, the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Lift up all over the covering, shield of saving faith, upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles, missiles of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the Spirit wields, which is the word of God. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season and the spirit with all manner of prayer and entreaty. So to that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding on behalf of all the saints, God consecrated people. 
May the Lord bless, bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. Amen. So we started the series by looking at those armors that Apostle Paul recommended unto us when we talk about victory in his armor. We started the series by looking at those armor. We said for each battle of life, there is an armor that God has deposited into our hands. And we started also by saying that having this armor is like going out and being fully dressed. That if we don't have this armor, we're naked and we're vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. We look at David as an example. I mean, we look at Paul and Silas, the armor that God gave them in different battles of life they faced. We look at First Chronicles chapter 20, we look at Jehoshaphat, the kind of armor that God gave them in that, in that period of time. So, looking at that, we started by looking at the six armor that um, Apostle Paul wrote in, the, in his letter to the church in Ephesus. And we start with the belt of truth. We say Jesus himself is the truth that we're talking about. That the first thing you must have is to have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. To be convinced that you know that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. Because Jesus himself is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God except by me. So Jesus is the truth that we need. We say the truth is the truth. You cannot, you cannot, you don't have different versions of the truth. You only have different versions of life. That is why you have different versions of the enemy. You have different versions of the devil. But God is the same. That's why I said, let all men be liars. But God is the truth. He will always remain the truth. And we look at the breastplate of righteousness. We said that is to be righteous with God. And it's still boiling down to the same thing. Because the Bible says, Jesus who knew no sin was made sin. So that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. We said having the breastplate of righteousness is obeying the command of God. It's having somebody that holds you accountable. And then we move on to the third one. We said strapping your feet with the gospel of peace. And the gospel of peace, we said, because peace is required to see God. Verse is follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see God. That we should have the peace of man, God in our hearts. That no matter what is going on, that God has our back. You know how they say, I got your back. God got your back. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says he will keep in perfect peace. Those whose mind stayed on him, that our mind must be stayed on God. For us to have that peace. That we should also live in peace with others. So today we're going to continue. And we said the reason why we should live in peace is because we said we should be of good cheer. That we're already declared winners. No matter what is going on, you're already a winner. Did you, talk, you know, I, and I gave an example. That if they ask you to fight, but they say before the fight, you're already, you don't worry, you are getting the belt. But you have to keep fighting. And you have to fight to the end. Because the Bible says only those who endure to the end shall be saved. So you have to keep fighting and fight to the end. So what will you do? Will you give up? You already know that you are winning. So why would you give up? That it does not matter what is going on. God has declared you and I winners. And because he has declared us winners, we cannot hang in the towel and say, you know what? I'm taking off my boxing gloves. I'm not boxing again. I'm not fighting again. I'm just going to give up. Give up. That we should not give up. That no matter what you are going through this morning, in the name of Jesus, God has declared you winner. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I just pray that the Lord will reveal to you in your, in your innermost being that you are a winner. So you do not give up on life. That you do not give up on God. That no matter what situation you are in this morning, that your armor is that you are a winner. Do not give up. Have peace. Today we're going to look at the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Faith is a defense against the fairy dust of the arrow of the devil. It protects us from, you know when you talk about a shield, a shield is sort of a covering. If you look at the Roman soldiers, the shield that they have is made of iron. 
and it's like they, they hold it like this while they're fighting with the other hand. It's like he protects them from the arrow of the enemy from penetrating or hitting their heart, from coming into them. That is faith. That is the shield of faith we're talking about this morning. Hebrews 11, chapter 1, verse 1. Hebrews 11, 1, verse 1. And I'm going to read the Amplified Version. He said, faith is the assurance. The title deed. Confirmation. You know, for those of you that have mortgages, you know you don't get the title deed until you are done paying the mortgage. The title deed is with the bank. But the Bible is telling us, that what God wants us to have this morning is that to know that we have the title deed to our victory by faith. Faith is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their, of the, their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by physical sense. So by fact, faith says it is, is true, but you can't experience it by physical sense. What am I saying? Faith is I can't see my prayer, but I know I have a prayer. Faith is I don't know how it's going to happen, but I believe God that when I take a cup of water and I drink it, it's going to go through my esophagus and go to where it's supposed to go, through my kidneys. That it will not go through another means. That is faith. That is faith. That is faith. Faith is knowing that when I lay down at night, I'm going to wake up in the morning. Faith is getting behind the stairing. On my way to church this morning, getting behind the stairing, holding the stairing, starting the car, and knowing that I'm going to church, I will get to church. That is faith. That is what we're talking about. Knowing that God is the one that's driving the car. I'm assured that I will get to church this morning. And I got here this morning. Faith is waking up in the morning, going to the bathroom, sitting there, and doing your business. That is faith. How are you sure that that's going to happen? Why don't you say, I don't know if this is going to happen, and I will not get up, I will not go to the bathroom, because I'm not sure it will happen. Something gave you assurance that when you get up, when you go to the bathroom, you will do something. And you got up, you went to the bathroom, and you did something. That is fair. So when the enemy begins to throw that fairy dart at you, the accusation, the temptation, the guilt, the uncertainty, telling you you are worthy, telling you you are not fit to live, telling you you are worthless, discouraging you, telling you that business is not going to work, telling you it's not going to progress, telling you you are going to get fired from your job, telling you you are going to get COVID-19, then you are going to be sick, telling you this. Faith is, I know the facts. But my God says otherwise. That is faith. That is faith. Fact is the economy is bad. Faith is God supplies all my need that promises his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Fact is we're great, we're going to great depression. That is fact. But faith is what are riches are in my house? And my righteousness are just forever. That is fact. That is faith. Faith is fact is everybody is dying of coronavirus. They have projected millions of well, 800,000. How many people they projected will die? How many people has it? That is fact. That is that is fact. They have facts, they have statistics to prove it. But faith is with long life really satisfying me and showing me his salvation. Faith is, I shall not die, but I will live to declare the goodness of God. Faith is, I shall go to my grave in good old age. Like a shelf of corn in a city. That is faith. That's what we're talking about this morning. So when the enemy comes at you, faith is what will rise up in you to say, no, that's not what the word of God says. That is not the promise of God for my life. Look on strengthen your faith this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God strengthen your faith. Because even Jesus knows that our faith can be shaken if the enemy comes at us. He told Peter, he said, the enemy is coming to suit you. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith will be strengthened. Our shield of faith is needed to please the Father. Hebrews 
levels to faith without faith. It is impossible to please God. For those that come to him must believe that he is. He is what he says in his word. And he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Matthew 21, 21. The Bible says faith moves mountains. Every mountain placed in our path, we can move it by faith. Faith in the word of God that this mountain will move and it will move. Galatians 2, 16 says it is by faith that we are justified. It is not of works. Faith is what makes you believe that you say, I give my life to Jesus, you are the Lord of my life, that Jesus from that point take over as the Lord of your life. That is faith. If you don't have faith, then you are not saved this morning. You are not saved because you don't believe in your salvation. Faith is salvation. Salvation is faith. Hallelujah. Let me go to this. Let me keep it simple. Having the shield of faith is having Jesus Christ and believing that Jesus is the Lord of our life. The Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Faith gives life to the just. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Faith gives you life. Faith gives life. Because the just live by faith. Hallelujah. Faith is needed to face and overcome the devil and to live. I talk about Peter earlier. Luke 22, 31 to 32. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 32. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 2, it says, we should fight the good fight of faith. That is to have the shield of faith. It says, lay hold on the eternal life on which you were called. Luke chapter 5, verse 20. Look at the paralytic man. Look at his friends. Look at what they did. Look at the faith of his friends. The Bible says Jesus so faith and faith, faith gives life. The Bible says Jesus saw the faith of his friends and told him, get up, carry your bed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Faith is having faith in the power of God. Your faith should rest on the power of God. How do you feed your faith this morning? Feed your faith by staying on the word of God. That's how to have the shield of faith. How do you have the shield of faith? Base your faith on God and not your circumstances. Because your circumstances can change, but God does not change. Your circumstances does not determine the capability or capacity of God. Does not determine the efficiency or the efficacy of God. So base Whatever is going on with you, based on God's capacity and capability, not what you are seeing. That is how to take on the shield of faith. That this is the fact. I know what the fact says. I see what the doctor's report said. But I know that is not what God has said concerning me. Remember one of our sister's testimony? She said the doctor told her, with what I'm looking at, you cannot get pregnant. But she believed God. She got pregnant. The enemy threatened the pregnancy, but she delivered with ease. That is faith. That I see what you are telling me, doctor. But <laughs> thank you. Because the word of God says, I'm a joyful mother of children. So this is not for me. I acknowledge that you somebody, the doctor, God has blessed them. I'm not against doctor. He saw what he saw. But he said, I know what you see. Now I know where to direct my prayer. Now I know where to channel my prayer. Because this is not for me. This is not my portion. And I just remember the story. I, I, I've shared it before. When Ife was little, he loved to play soccer. And every, when we, every time we go to the soccer field, he will come, will come back with hives, what we call hives, rashes on his body, and he will be wheezing. He will, I will have to take him to the emergency room because he could not breathe. Eventually, we went to the doctor, but before we got to the doctor, the doctor said, he's going to go see allergy and immunologist and refer him. And before, before we got there, I started teaching him the word of God. I think it was about five or six then. I said, you know what the word of God says? By his stripes, you are healed. So I taught him that scripture, and I said, 
person just keeps saying it. And he started saying it. He was on medication. And he started saying it. He started saying it. He continued to say it. And we took him to the allergy and immunologist. And they tested him that day. When they were testing him, they made him flat on his um, stomach. And they put all sorts of things on his back, testing him. And he started itching. I saw those, I saw his body swelling up. And he started crying. He started crying. He started crying. Mommy, why are we here? Mommy, why are we here? I said, they're trying to determine what you are, what you are allergic to. And after they were done, they gave him, they had to give him Benadryl in the office, in the doctor's office before he came. And they said, oh, he's allergic to grass, he's allergic to peanuts, he's allergic to egg, he's allergic to milk. He's a, before he looked at me, I said, so what can I eat? <laughs> you mean I can no longer eat peanut butter and jelly? You don't tell a five-year-old they can't eat peanut butter and jelly. I looked at him and said, that's what they said. You know, people were going to do blood work to confirm all these things that we have done. He looked at me and said, mommy, what are we doing here? Why were we waiting to get the blood draw? He looked at me what are we doing here? I thought you told me by the stripe I was healed. I shed tears. We were healed. They had already prescribed EpiPen for him. Give him, take this with him everywhere he goes because he can go into anaphylactic reaction. They, they mentioned all sorts of, and we prayed together. They did the blood work. The blood work came back negative. Till now, he stopped taking any medication for allergy. God is faithful. Just stay on his word and believe that God has the capacity. He has the capability. Our faith waits, our faith shapes. But find somebody that can strengthen your faith. Know who you are going to discuss with. Know somebody that will pull down your face and say, ah, I know somebody else. So when that happens, it didn't take three days before they died. And then your blood pressure rises. Your heart rate starts, you start pumping, you start crying. Or they will say, oh, you don't know. And the last person that happens to, they never had children till they died. When I, that diagnosis you have, I know somebody else. But they will not have the story of somebody that had the same diagnosis and had children. They don't have the same, the one somebody that had the diagnosis and still lived. Build your faith on people that will strengthen your faith. Build your story, your situation to people that will strengthen your faith. It took a five-year-old to strengthen my faith when I was wavering, when I was shaking. The Lord will strengthen your faith this morning. In the name of Jesus. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that no matter what you are going through, that your faith will be strengthened. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That you will see God rising in that circumstances. That you will see God giving you victory in that circumstances. That it does not matter what the enemy is bringing your way. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That you will know that you have victory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, that whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this morning. As many that are listening to me, could there be something that you are trusting God for? That you are believing God for? In the name of Jesus Christ, may faith produce it. May faith produce it. May faith produce it. Faith produce that healing. Faith produce that child. Faith produce that job. In the name of Jesus Christ. Faith produce that promotion. In the name of Jesus. No matter what you are believing God for this morning. May faith, may it build 
Jesus Christ, you will testify to the goodness of God in the name of Jesus. May his faith be your shield. May the faith of God be your protection. May your faith in God surround you as a shield. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we bless your name. We give you glory, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah. If you are listening to me, no matter where you're not, no matter where you're listening to me from, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this morning I just want to invite you to Jesus. He's the Lord of my life. He's the one that healed the boy that I was talking about. It's not because we confess the word, but Jesus in his power saw our faith and healed the need. Today I want to invite you to Jesus. Make Jesus the Lord of your life, and you will never be disappointed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. After that, are you going to have simulation there? Are you going to have trials there? Are things going to come your way to shake you there? But be of good cheer. He has overcome. In the name of Jesus, as you give your life to Jesus this morning, you will overcome. In the mighty name of Jesus. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. I believe that you died and you rose on the third day for my sin. Believe that you are the Lord of my life and you have power to wipe every sin. Please forgive me this morning. Accept me as your child and I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Let my name be written in the book of life. You swear you swear on a scroll roll of stone in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.